To convert 7 over 30 into a percentage, the first thing I'm going to do is to convert it into a decimal. That means that we will do 7 divided by 30, or 30 into 7. Sometimes, when I'm doing a division, I write out lists of multiples of the number outside the division bracket. I'm not going to do that in this case because the multiples of 30 are the same as the multiples of 3, which I know well. The only difference is they're all going to have zeros on the end. So let's get into it. 30 goes into 7 zero times. 30 goes into 70 twice. That's 60. So there will be a remainder of 10. 30 goes into 100 three times. That's 90. And the remainder will be 10. 30 goes into 100 three times, that's 90, and the remainder will be 10. So you can probably see that these threes will repeat forever. And so 7 divided by 30 is 0 0.23 repeater. To turn this decimal into a percentage, we multiply by 100. So this decimal place is going to move two spaces to the right, and so we will get 23.3 repeater percent. 7 over 30 is equal to 23.3 repeater percent. 1 over 48 is difficult to turn into a fraction over 100. It's very difficult in fact. It's much harder than 7 over 30 would have been. So again, we will start by turning our fraction into a decimal. So we will do 1 divided by 48. This means we're doing 48 into 1. Now 48 is a tricky one to know the multiples of. So I'm going to write some out to get me started. I'm going to do one amount of 48 is 48. Two amounts of 48 is 96. Four amounts of 48 is going to be 192. And eight amounts of 48 is going to be 384. Each time I'm just doubling the number and that's why I'm skipping some of the steps. I can fill them in later if I need them, but this will give me the broad impression of the multiples of 48. So 48 goes into one zero times, add decimal places and a zero. 48 goes into 10 zero times, we add another zero. 48 goes into 100 twice, that's 96, and the remainder is 4. 48 goes into 40 zero times. 48 goes into 400, well we can see it's going to be 8 times because it goes into 384. The remainder is going to be 16. 48 goes into 160. Now this one is a little bit harder to see from the list we've written. However, I can see it will go 4 times into 192. That means that it will go 3 times into 160. 192 is 32 more than 160, which means the remainder will be 32 less than 48. Because this video is not about doing the division algorithm, I'm using some shortcuts here. I don't mean to confuse you. If they're confusing, just work through the division the way you're comfortable with. So 32 less than 48 is going to be 16. Ah, now we do 48 into 160 again. That will be three times with a remainder of 16. And we can see that those threes will repeat forever. So 1 over 48 is 0 0.02083 with the repeating dot over the 3. When we turn this into a percentage, we need to multiply by 100, so the decimal place will move twice to the right, and so we will get 2.083 repeater percent. 1 over 27, again, is really hard to convert into an equivalent fraction over 100. So we will say that is 1 divided by 27. Now, that's going to be 27 into 1. 
I'm going to start by writing a list of multiples of 27. So one amount of 27, two amounts of 27, four amounts of 27, and eight amounts of 27. Again, I don't know these off by heart. I can get the one, two, four, and eight multiples just by doubling the number. Okay, 27 goes into one zero times. 27 goes into 10 zero times. 27 goes into 100. Ooh. Well, we can see four amounts of 27 is 108, which is just a bit too big. So it'll go into 100 three times. Since four amounts is eight bigger than 100, that means the remainder is going to be eight less than 27, which is 19. So now we do 27 into 190. Let's see, 190. I'm going to work backwards from 216, which is eight amounts of 27. So if I subtract 27 from that, I'm going to get, well, let's see, let's subtract seven, that's 209. And then if we subtract 20, we're going to have 189. Oh, I like that. It's so close to 190. So we're going to go seven times with a remainder of one. 27 goes into 10, zero times. 27 goes into 100, three times with a remainder of 19. And we can see that this has begun to repeat. So the repeating pattern is 0, 3, 7. All right, so 1 over 27 is equal to 0 0.037 repeater. To turn this into a percentage, we multiply by 100. So we move the decimal point twice to the right. Now, we need to really think carefully about what the repeater tells us. This means we're going to have 3.703, and this bit is going to repeat forever. And this number is a percentage. 7 ninths is difficult to turn into an equivalent fraction over 100. So we're going to say, well, this must be 7 divided by 9, which means we're going to do 9 into 7. 9 goes into 7 zero times. We add our decimal places. 9 goes into 70 seven times, which is 63. So there's a remainder of 7. 9 goes into 70 seven times, which is 63. So there's a remainder of 7. We can see that this is going to repeat forever. So this will be 0 0.7 repeater. To turn this decimal into a percentage, we need to multiply by 100. So that decimal place is going to move twice. We know that this is sevens forever, so we're going to get 77.7 .7 repeater percent. Two sixths is hard to turn into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. So we will just do the division first. Now we can simplify this to one third, which means our division is one divided by three. In other words, we do three into one. Three goes into one zero times. We add our decimal places and a zero here. Three goes into 10 three times with a remainder of one. Three goes into 10 three times with a remainder of one. Ah, very quickly we have seen that this will be equal to 0 0.3 repeater. To turn this decimal into a percentage, we multiply by 100, so that decimal place moves to the right twice. And if we think about what that three repeater means, this is going to give us 33.3 .3 repeater percent. 4 twelfths is difficult to turn into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. But before we turn it into a decimal, we will simplify it. This is one third. Ah, one third is also what we got when we simplified the last question to sixths. That means that this will actually have the same percentage answer. So four twelfths will be equal to 33.3 .3 repeater 
percent. Thank goodness we simplified that before doing the division. It saved us a lot of work. Just like 4 twelfths, 1 twelfth is also going to be hard to make into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. So we will do 1 divided by 12. In other words, 12 into 1. 12 goes into 1 zero times. We add our decimals and a zero. 12 goes into 10 zero times. So we add another zero. 12 goes into 108 times. That's 96. So there's a remainder of 4. 12 goes into 43 times. That's 36. So there's also a remainder of 4. 12 goes into 40 three times with a remainder of 4. And we can see now that this has begun to repeat. So our decimal will be 0 0.083 repeater. To turn this decimal into a percentage, we multiply by 100, which means we move that decimal place twice to the right. And so our answer will be 8.3 repeater percent. 7 eighths is difficult to turn into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. So let's do 7 divided by 8, or 8 into 7. 8 goes into 7 zero times, place decimals and a zero. 8 goes into 70 eight times, that's 64, so the remainder is 6. 8 goes into 60 seven times, that's 56, so the remainder is 4. And 8 goes into 40 five times with no remainder. So we get 87, sorry, 0 0.875. Converting that into a percentage by multiplying by 100, we get 87.5%. Now, let me show you. If you knew off the top of your head by some fluke that 8 goes into 100 12 and a half times, that means 7 over 8. We can multiply the denominator by 12 and a half and the numerator by 12 and a half. So the denominator becomes 100. We did that on purpose. To work out the numerator, we can do 7 times 12, which is 84, and 7 times a half, or 0.5, which is 3.5. And if we add them together, we're going to get 84 plus 3.5 is 87.5, and therefore this is 87.5%. So this is an example, if you're quick at noticing a solution to multiplying the denominator into 100, this is an example of how you can shortcut all the work we did above. We're going to see that shortcut working much better in the next two examples. 7 over 7, like all fractions with the same number in the numerator and denominator, simplifies to 1 over 1. This is 1 whole or 100%. Another way to check this is we multiply the denominator by 100 to turn 1 into 100, and we multiply the numerator by the same thing. Now this is out of 100, and since percent means out of 100, that tells us that 100 out of 100 is 100%. That one was nice and easy. For 5 tenths, we might be tempted to start by simplifying it to 1 over 2. But instead of making it a smaller fraction, we can find an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100 quite easily by multiplying top and bottom by 10. So 100 by 10 gives, sorry, 10 times 10 gives us 100. We did that on purpose. And 50 times 10 gives us 50. Since percent means out of 100, 50 out of 100 is 50 percent. That one was nice and easy, which is a great note to finish on. All of these examples that we've looked at here have been proper fractions. If you have an improper fraction, for example, 15 over 10, we can do the same approach as we did above by turning the denominator into 100 by multiplying by 10. 
we have to multiply the numerator by 10 as well. And here we get 150%. If we had 7 over 3, well, there are two ways we can go about this. One is we can just do the same process we've done all along by doing 7 divided by 3. Another thing we can do is we can turn it into a mixed number, which would be two and one third, if you know how to do that. Now, the whole number part of this will be a number of 100%. So this is going to be 200% and then one third of 100%. Now we did one third over here because two sixths simplified to one third. So this answer will be 233.3 repeater per cent. I've gone over these two extra examples fairly quickly, but I just wanted to make sure that you had some idea how to approach them. If you're having trouble with them, don't give up. One way to work it out or to learn to work it out is to actually use a calculator to find the decimal, then multiply that decimal by 100, add a percent sign, this will give you the correct answer. And so now you want to see if you can work backwards and figure out what steps of working would get you to that correct answer. And I would strongly recommend that you have a look at my examples to help you understand. I hope that this video helped you. Thank you for watching.